I have a prediction that we're going to like everything that's in that kitchen. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You know, I've been on the show, what, five weeks now? Yeah. Every day I love what's over there. <laughs> I, I love trying do. it out. I well, should we go try out some more? Yeah, let's yeah, try Yeah, we have Chef Craig Baker in with Team Indiana. We were talking, Randy, that culinary crossroads and continuing that conversation. Lots of people coming together. Good food, good cause. And you know a lot about this as well. So let's, yeah. let's, let's dive right into it again. For those who may have missed us the other day, culinary crossroads, what's this all about? Um, so it's an initiative to kind of expand the presence of Indiana's food culture yeah. outside of the state. And that also starts here at home. So right now we're featuring a series of chefs over six weeks. Uh, it's a dinner series, um, two chefs per night. And you can get some tickets and come and experience something you can't get. And one I of the things that. that's really cool is the chefs are like collaborating together. Mm -hmm. um, so you're getting offerings that you wouldn't even find in their own restaurants. That's really great. And I think the culinary, I guess the variety and the talent here in Indianapolis is so strong. And I'm so glad that we get to feature that as well. Yeah. And the, one of the things about the program is, is as it's growing, it's featuring all of Indiana and not just in Indianapolis. So, yeah. uh, you know, keep your eye out in the future. You get to see a lot of other things come together. Fantastic. I, okay. I just heard about this a few weeks ago. Yeah. That's a great idea. I it think really, so really too. Is. Bringing yeah, everybody together. There's like two different parts to the initiative. I mean, we have Team Indiana and then Culinary Crossroads. And Team Indiana does outreach right yeah. now currently, and that program's expanding as well. So it's pretty exciting. Um, plus, we get to feature and cook with all the stuff that's produced here. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's a really good uh, cool thing, way to get our sure. name out, you know? Well, that, 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 that's great. I see uh, bacon, I see eggs, I see Whoa. some other good stuff over yeah. here. So what are we putting together today? So we have uh, some Indiana pork belly, and I basically uh, poached it in uh, apple cider last night, Ooh. and I cooled it down. Um, and then I have all these Easter eggs that were left over from my kids. And you're thinking, <laughs> what do I do with and, these? And so <laughs> today I thought, I was like, hey, we're going to build a sandwich out of this and repurpose something yes. and turn it into something delicious. Okay, fantastic. So, what kind of sandwich? So, it's a rift on a BLT. B okay. Um, so, it's like a thick, you know, you have the thick cut bacon, if you will, or pork belly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, we have some ramps because it's ramp season ramps. coming in together. Um, and then it's really, instead of, we're going to make our quick ramp mayo, but the egg salad is going to be what brings it all together. It's like the sauce. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple little tricks. Okay. Uh, trivet, everyone probably has one at home. Uh, save your time for uh, what? doing eggs. Oh, great idea. So you just punch them through. Uh, that's one of those um, light bulb, mind blown moments, like Randy. That. And then... Um, Can you get one of those at many stores or whatever? I'm, yeah, like, you, uh, they have them all over. Do you know how long over. that would have taken me to cut, right? Yeah, I'd which still is be why slicing, right? Jolene, Jolene's over there nodding her head. She knows. Um, and so then, like, it's all the stuff that you would normally put into, like, an egg salad. But we're going to tweak it a little bit. Um, people don't use a lot of celery leaves. I think that's the best part. And celery is my favorite vegetable. Ooh, okay. Really? So, now that's that's probably not common, Randy. Yeah. It's, celery? I'm okay. I'm with them. I okay. like celery too. Okay. So basically like... Look at those knife skills. <laughs> <laughs> not me. It pays, it pays to have a sharp knife. Um, but the, I mean, not only do you get the color, but you yeah. have the intensity out of the leaves. Um, and then by nice using texture. that, the center of the celery, you're not wasting it, right? Okay. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm not going to eat that part. Yeah. Um, but it's a little more tender and the flavor is pretty intense. Um, so it doesn't taste like cilantro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can't have that. <laughs> um, and then this is where things go off the rails because uh -oh. grandma basically would be like, oh, like that's, you know, mayonnaise, whatever. Yeah, we're good. Um, we're going sweet pickles. And Craig's like, nope. So sweet pickles sweet are. Pickles. I'm okay with Do you, that. I love I I'm love all okay. kinds of pickles, but some people prefer you know the classic dill yeah. over sweet. But I like sweet pickles. And then um, get a good mayo. Yeah. Right. Yep. I'm a big fan. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we're gonna make a lot, but we're not really gonna use this much. We're gonna eat a lot. <laughs> I brought a lot. Make a lot, eat a lot. <laughs> and then. Um, Local Folks Food Mustard, another good Indiana company. Local uh, Folks Foods. You can find it around. Uh, they make all their stuff in Sheridan. It's okay. really good stuff. 
Um, it has uh, inside of the mustard itself, it's got a, a bunch of different vegetables and a little bit of chili. So it has some really? spice that's yeah. not nice like just kick, mustard. Not yeah. yeah. And then um, sugar, right? Because we got to right. sweeten it up. Yep. Sweeten it up. Well, in pork belly, um, doesn't have a, like, I poached it in apple cider to kind of bring some flavor out, right? But by sweetening this up with a little bit of sugar and then um, pickle juice. Oh, that right? that's so, interesting. Oh, I'm okay with that. So the juice kind of thins it out, which is what's going to give ah. us our texture. And then um, I'm going to use dry dill because Man, everyone has maybe, it. I'm going to write all this is what I'm going to write all on the list. Yeah. Yeah. Recipes on the, uh, I sent it in, so I, Ooh, it's probably we'll on the website. We'll post that later, yes. And then you just mix it up, right? And then the key to this is it's, it is its own sauce. Um, huh. It's a rift on a dish, like uh, there's a really fancy French term called gribiche. Okay. And so basically I took the idea of a gribiche and then kind of melded it into an egg salad. Um, so it's sweet, salty, savory, right? You get the eggs and speaking of savory, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And then you need a flow chart for this one here to follow all this. Uh, <laughs> you know, chefs, we complicate everything. Yeah, Can't just right. that pinch of this, easy. pinch of that. And uh, you know the deal. We we got to wrap this up. But are you set? Is that it? Well, no. So while we take a break and you guys go about, I'm gonna I'm gonna get some bread going, <laughs> okay. and then we'll, we'll build it in a second so, Randy, segment. So we're gonna have part. Two, so you gotta wait to try. Okay, I'll wait. Wait I'll to wait. eat. Hold <laughs> off a little bit. We have part two coming up <laughs> here in just a little bit. Yeah, Anessa. <laughs> What a great thing, right, to do with those leftover eggs. And did you see uh -huh. what he did and how he just smashed those in the thing and then you don't have to do the cutting and all that kind of stuff? I loved all of it. Gotcha. And you know what, Alice, I am a big fan of flowcharts. So an egg salad flowchart sounds amazing.